The third conic that we will be working with is the ellipse. And it's practically what you've been working with, guys. It's identifying the type of ellipse that we're working, if it's horizontal, vertical, and identifying its corresponding equation. But before that, we need to know the elements of an ellipse. An ellipse is going to have two, verte two vertex, okay, V1 and V2. It's going to have a center. It's going to have two focus, which that's what it's called as foci. It has the extremes of the minor axis, which are the two points that make the minor axis. The lattice rectum, which is also the line that crosses through the focus. The length of the major axis, which is the, a, the, the axis that is the longest one. The length of the focal axis, which is the length from focus to focus. The length of the minor axis, which is the other side. It's the one, it's the side that it's perpendicular to the length of the major axis and the eccentricity, which it's the one that it's going to tell us, it's going to tell us how circular our ellipse is. Now, there's two types of ellipses. We have the horizontal ellipse and we have the vertical ellipse. Whenever I'm working with a horizontal ellipse, this would be the equation of a horizontal ellipse. x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equal to 1. h and k belong to the center. h is the x of the center and k is the y of the center. a is half of the major axis and b is half of the minor axis. So that means that a will always be the biggest number. If a is the biggest number and it's under x squared, then that means that you're going to be working with a horizontal ellipse. When my ellipse is vertical, like this one, notice that the only thing that changes, it's the a value. If the a squared or the biggest value is under the y squared, then you are working with a vertical ellipse. Now we need to know this formula, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, because c is the distance from the center to the focus. a is the distance from the center to the vertex, b is the distance from the center to the covertex, and c is the distance from the center to the focus. These are some important formulas that you have to take into consideration to find the elements of the ellipse. The lattice rectum, it's 2b squared over a. The length of the major axis is 2 times a. The length of the focal axis is 2 times c. The length of the minor axis is 2 times b. The eccentricity is c over a. And the condition is that it must satisfy that a squared must be equal to b squared plus c squared, which it's practically the same as this one. It's just that in this one, c is already isolated. Now, let's take a look at an example. The problem says, determine the elements in the graph of the ellipse whose equation is 9x squared plus 4y squared minus 36 equal to 0. First thing we need to do is take this general form of the ellipse and put it in the ordinary form, which is what we just saw. These are the ordinary forms. Okay, so we got to make it look like this to identify if it's a horizontal ellipse or a vertical ellipse. So, what's the first thing that we have to do, guys? We have to take, leave all of the variables on one side and take everything else to the other side. So I would have 9x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 36. Once you have it this way, guys, if you don't have any more terms except x squared and y squared, then we need to divide by this value, always by this value, the number that it's independent, that doesn't have a variable. If I divide by 36 this side, that means that I have to divide 36 this, no, this term and also this term. And you simplify. x squared over 4, y squared over 9, it's equal to 1. 
Now notice that this looks in the form, in the ordinary form. It's just that h and k, it's zero, and that is why I have x squared and just y squared. In this case, the center is at zero comma zero, and because my biggest number is under the y squared, then I'm talking about a vertical ellipse. So that means that I'm going to be working with an ellipse that looks like this. With this in mind, guys, knowing the center, you can find the value of a by doing the square root of this, the value of b by doing the square root of this, and the value of c by using the condition. So to find the value of a, you take a squared, and you know that that's equal to 9, so that means that a is going to be plus and minus 3. The value of b is going to be plus and minus 2. And taking the condition and substituting what I have will give me that c is the square root of 5. Now by knowing the value of a, b, and c, we can find all of the elements of my ellipse. I know I'm working with the vertical ellipse that it has a center at 0, 0. So therefore, if it's a vertical ellipse, I know that it goes like this. So what that means, guys, is that if my center is here, then I know that it's going to move A units up and A units down. So that is why it goes 0, 0,3 and 0, negative 3. The focus is from the center to the focus 0 square root of 5 and from the center to the focus 0 negative square root of 5. The extremes of the minor axis are the extremes are these sides, this angle, this length right here, this point right here, and this point right here. So it's going to move B units to the right, which is 2, and 2 units to the left, which is negative 2, 0. The lattice rectum, I substitute the value of B and A, and I get 8 thirds. Half of that is from the focus to the point on the ellipse. Half of that is from the focus to the other side of the ellipse. The major axis is from vertex to vertex, which that is 2 times 3, and that will give me 6. The minor axis is from covertex to covertex, so it's going to go from 2, negative 2, to 2, and that is 4 units, 2 times 2. The focal axis is the distance between focus 1 and focus 2. The eccentricity is C over A, which is the square root of 5 over 3. And my graph would end up something like this. My covertex, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. My vertex, 0, 3, 0, negative 3. My foci, which is approximately 2 point something, 2 point something. And my center at 0, 0. Let's take a look at another example. There's cases where I have more than just x squared and y squared. When I have it that way, guys, I have to start off the same way. You take the independent term to the other side, and you end up with x squared plus 16y squared plus 4x minus 32y is equal to 44. Now, we cannot divide by 44 yet. What we have to do now is we have to organize our information so that we can complete the square. I have x squared and I have 4x, 16y squared and negative 32y. Once I have it this way, guys, you got to complete the square, but notice this one already has a coefficient of 1, so I can go ahead and do the completing the square of the 4. I take the 4, divide by 2, and square it, and that would give me 4. But this one, the y squared, needs to have a coefficient of 1. So the first thing that I need to do is, from these two terms, I need a factor out of 16. So I take out the 16, and inside of my parentheses, I would have y squared minus 2y. Once I have it this way, now I can complete the square. You would take the minus 2 divided by 2 and square it, and I would have to add 1. So after completing the square, the number that you're going to add on this side is 4, and the number that you're going to add here is 1. But when you add it to the other side, guys, since this x squared plus 4x plus 4 is not factored, you literally just add the 4 on the other side. But the, 16, but the 1, guys, it's not going to be added just by 1, because this 1, it's inside of a parenthesis, and 1 times 16, it's 16. So what you're really adding to, 
this side is a 16, so I gotta add a 16 on this side. Once you have it this way, now you can factor. x squared plus 4x plus 4 can be factored into x plus 2 squared, and y squared minus 2y plus 1 can be factored into y minus 1 squared. Once you have it this way, then you can divide everything by the number that it's independent here. So I would have to divide everything by, 16, by 64. If I divide everything by 64, I would end up with 64 divided by 64, 1. And then 16 divides 64 four times, and then here you'll just end up with a 64. Notice that this looks like the horizontal ellipse because 64, it's the biggest number, and it's under the x squared. Once I have it this way, I can find the value of a, the value of b, the value of c, and the rest of the elements of my ellipse. 64 is going to represent a squared. 4 represents b squared. And that's how I end up with a squared being 64. That's going to give me that a is 8 b squared is 4, that means that b is 2, and then from there you use a condition and you get that c is the square root of 60. If I simplify this, that's 2 square root of 15. Once I have those values, then I can find the center. You know that the center is going to be the, y, the h here and the k here. So the center it's going to be at minus 2 comma 1. The center is going to be at minus 2 comma 1. And since we are working with a horizontal ellipse, that means that what's going to move to find the vertex, it's the x value. So the vertex it's going to be minus 2 plus the value of a, which is 8 comma 1. So that gives me one of my vertex as 6 comma 1. And the other one is going to be minus 2 minus 8 comma 1, so it's going to be minus 10 comma 1. My foci is going to be minus 2 plus the value of c and minus the value of c, and that's how I get that one of them is 5.7 comma 1, and the other one is minus 9.7 comma 1. The extremes of the minor axis, the y value is the one that it's being affected. So here you would have negative 2 stays the same as the center, and to the 1, you're going to add the value of b. So you're going to add one, 2, and you're going to subtract 2. And that's how you get minus 2, comma 3, and minus 2, comma minus 1. The lattice rectum, I substitute into b and a, and you get that it's 1. And then the major axis is 2 times a, which is 16. The minor axis is 2 times b, which is 4. The focal axis is 2 times c and the eccentricity is c over a. And that's how I get all of the elements of my ellipse. If I need to graph this, then you guys start off with the center. The center, remember that it was minus 2 comma 1. So at minus 2 comma 1 right here, it's your center, and you know that a is 8. So from here, if you move, if my center is here, Okay, and you know that from the center to one of the vertex, all of this is A, which is 8, and from the center to the other side for the other vertex, it's negative 8. These are the covertex, so to the Y value, it's where you add the V value, so you're going to add the same amount up and the same amount down.